Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Trader Summit and I have the one and only Tracy <laughs> Shukart with me today from, she's a partner at Intelligence Quarterly. Good to see you, Tracy, how have you been? I've been great, glad to be back as usual. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have you here, you know, having a good friend of the Trader Summit community here, uh, sharing your thoughts and ideas. But here we are, you know, here, we're stuck in, we're stuck in summer, uh, you know, half of half of the world in, in, is is out on on holiday or vacation. Um, markets seem a little messy. What are you what are you making of the markets now? And um, you know, within you know NFP on Friday, which people will be viewing this after the the jobs report, but we got inflation data coming up. How are you feeling about where we're at currently? I mean, I, I think right now, well, obviously we're seeing a bear market bounce right now, and what we have to kind of be looking at is the fact that. Um, you know, everybody's had a terrible first half of the year. No trade has actually worked at all. And so I think that going into, and then you have um, in November, you have uh, remunerations, so uh, our redemptions. And so what's gonna happen is these guys are gonna lose money if they don't make some money. So we might see this bounce might have a little more oomph to it than, um, just a typical bear market bounce, at least going into the, into the fall you right know, now. You know, if, if you look at the S and P, Tracy, uh, since you know the beginning of the year, or since we you know peaked, which happened to be at the very beginning of the year, the market's been pretty. And I say the market. Let me just speak in less broad terms. Maybe the S and P. We've been in a right. nice downtrend, and you know the two hundred day moving average comes in around channel resistance. Uh, so you're saying there might be some further gains, but are we still going to be in a bear market, I guess, is the question so, I'm asking you. I, yeah, I, I mean, likely, because I don't see the Fed stopping hiking anytime soon. And I think that's going to um, obviously put downward pressure on the S&P in particular. Um, but, um, but again, we have to think about going into fall. Um, it's after summer. Guys are going to be looking to get into things again. Again, hedge funds, money managers, portfolio managers, also have had a terrible quants. Everybody's had a terrible year. Nothing's been working for them. And so that, you know, I'm thinking that they might put some more money to work. Um, and then if you look at some, you know, a lot of the CTAs are all still really short, even after this huge bounce, could possibly get a short squeeze, um, you know, but again, I, you know, have to see what the flows kind of look like heading into fall closer. Because again, right now, everything's chopped. Everything's very messy. Um, you know, well, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I hear, is terrible. I, hear your, I hear your message loud and clear. 15% off the lows is just not quite good enough for you. Right. <laughs> not yet. No, not yet. No. Okay. All right. No, but well, if you pull up, a, if you put a, pull up a chart of the like S and P 500, right? And if you look kind of where we're at, we really just got sucked up into the next, into the the upper supply zone, right? Yeah. And so if you have a daily chart there um, to pull up by any chance, pull chips, that but. up for you, just in as I do it right now, and uh, we'll pull up that chart for you. And then there's your S&P chart. That right. You... So there you go. We're sucked up. See where we're sucked. Up. Look left, obviously. So we're sucked up and you have it marked nicely. <laughs> we're sucked <laughs> up into to that zone. So we'll have to see. I mean, possibly we could, you know, make a run, run up, you know, hit that. What is it? You have that. Uh, I don't know what you're There's the 200-day moving average. We okay. got a 50% retracement, 618, you know, Fib FIBO coming exactly. in around 4370. So, yeah, I think that's totally possible to look in that area. If we start to break higher, we could look up into that next supply zone. How long that will last, not really sure, but, you know, it's definitely possible that, that we could get there. Obviously, you're going to want to look at the upper bar of this supply zone because if we see a rejection we could get rejected down fast all right well I, you know that's something that i think we all need to pay attention to and i think we you're you're, you're exactly right i mean the, the market's had some pretty good momentum doesn't mean the momentum is going to necessarily stop here and and markets always like to overshoot don't they yeah absolutely they do you know you you wanted to bring to um some traders attention uh some 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 uh names that you're looking at in the energy space and, uh, and I know you were looking at uh, LNG here. So what are your thoughts with, first of all, in the energy space and why here? Okay, so, um, because I mean, I prefer LNG 
I prefer natural gas trades here at this point and not, I'm not suggesting natural gas futures by any means. <laughs> you okay. know, I think you're kind of safer with um, the equity portion of this, but you know, I, and we talked about LNG months, months ago, um, which has made a spectacular move. Obviously it's, you know, it's taken a dip, but you know, we've still done, uh, you know, it's still performed very well. What I see is we have, you know, the energy crisis in Europe is not ending soon. Um, and we have long-term contracts with the United States. So I still really like names that have not only production capability, but also distribution capabilities. And Shadir is one of them. All right. Well, that's, that, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty solid looking chart. I know we're up against range highs, but you know, Hey, a breakout could really yield you know, some, some, uh, some higher levels, I, I would think. Um, you were also looking at Oxy. Uh, so, so what do you make of Oxy here? So Oxy, I mean, Oxy is the same thing. I think, you know, I, I would love to see Oxy um, a little bit lower, you know, if we could hit um, that, you know, like hit in there a little bit and see if we get a reject, if not that 48 area. But again, they have production and distribution capabilities. I really like it. Um, I know everybody is not a fan of Buffett, but he generally doesn't invest in things that he thinks are going to go down over the next 10 years. Wait a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I really like this chart. I know everybody probably sees the head and shoulders. I'm not sure that, you know, you know, I'm not a big fan of that pattern. A lot of times it doesn't always play out as planned. So, but again, I really like this name. I liked it. I like it a little bit lower though first. <laughs> All right. Well, and then you also brought up uh, SD. So Sandridge, what are you thinking here? So I like Sandridge, which is, uh, you know, uh, it's a, uh, a lot cheaper than most of them right now. We're kind of, uh, you know, in between those two um, MAs right now. Get a nice bounce reject off of that. Um, so, you know, I think right now we're kind of range bound. Again, I'd like that one a little bit lower, but uh, I'm actually, I actually was in this, was out. Um, and now I'm kind of nibbling again, but I'm looking to hold it over the next three to five years. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a, that's definitely a much longer term hold. Um, you know, <laughs> most I mean, people. I'm like, wow, you know, by, by then my kids I mean, will be graduating I, I mean, college. if you look at Just it, kidding. it trades, it trades, technically it trades very well. Yeah. So, you know, if you can look at those MAs, you know, I think, you know, you, you could trade that, um, relatively easily and you look at the longer term i mean that's just a nice rounded bottom as far as that exactly that chart goes um now you also uh, wanted to talk a little bit about base metals so um uh, you know what why why the interest right now in base metals you've you've got aluminum that you you'd brought to 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 my attention uh, it's gotten it's it's gotten you know obviously oh. torn apart this year but you know, I guess this is uh, more of a, um, you know, is inflation going to stick around type of play? What are, what are your thoughts? Well, I think what we're looking at is, is that when I look at base and industrial metals, they've taken a huge hit, right? Huge. I think it's been very overdone. And I think that um, nobody's, you know, we're still looking at energy transition policies, particularly in the West. Most of this action has been done because of China and lockdowns and you know demand is there but we're still in a structural supply deficit in fact we have shortages right now in um in aluminum and in copper which we'll look at after this um so i think that you know i think that there's even though the chart looks like death <laughs> <laughs> for now but even though the chart looks like death you know I can see, and this is what I, I would be looking at if I was a trader, is, you know, uh, the People's Party Congress is late October, where Xi is up for election. I know, <laughs> for, a, for third, a third term. Um, and so, you know, I think that he cannot have his country locked down for that. So what I would be looking at, and I, and I know, you know, um, the housing, you know, real estate market is horrible there. Um, which pertains to copper a little bit more, but I would be looking for, I would actually be looking for narrative clues on this more so than, um, than technicals on this. I mean, you know, if we could hit a double bottom, sure, you know, you know, like that recent bottom, maybe we touch a double, double bottom there, take a little bit of bounce. Um, but I think that's, again, another kind of, kind of a long-term trade, but I think it's, you know, 
right now, the fears of recession, China lockdowns, that it's spooking the basin industrial metals market. That makes that makes a lot of sense to me. And and you also wanted to bring up copper. Copper, you know, has gotten hit really hard, but we're, you know, we're at a, a pretty big and, and what I I think is a very, very key Fibonacci level that we respected around 314. So are you are you looking at copper as being a buy down at these levels? Yes, absolutely. Which you know, I would probably not go outright copper futures just because of how leveraged they are. I think you could easily do um, like um, an ETF or look at maybe perhaps some of the miners. Okay. All right. And, and like a Freeport Mac Moran or something, something of that nature. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Tracy, as far as, you know, the, the, uh, that, you know, surge higher that we might see again in, in some of these commodities. Are there, uh, you know, I know, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't talk to you a little bit about crude. And I know we hadn't planned on talking <laughs> about it, but crude, you know, we slipped below that really key 90 level today. How do you feel about crude and where should I be a buyer of crude? I mean, uh, yeah. So, you know, what is really happening now is the SPR releases are really starting to weigh on those front months, yeah. right? And we're not seeing, it's not so terrible on the back end, but it's really starting to weigh on those front months and it's a cumulative effect. So even though the, we didn't have a big of a release this week as usual, it doesn't matter. It's the cumulative amount of barrels that are flowing into the market, right? And where, and it's too much, too fast for this market to absorb and it, you know, and so when that kind of catches up, that move happens quickly, which we are seeing right now. And then, you know, what I would, you know, and also what's happening is now we're seeing all those barrels that were meant to stay in the U.S. are finding their ways way overseas because we just can't absorb, the, the market just can't absorb it here, um, which is actually not a good thing because we're actually releasing mostly sour barrels because we don't produce those here. We need those for refining. And we're getting to dangerous levels that way because the SPR was actually created in the 70s after the oil embargo so that we would never have to rely on foreign markets again as much. And we're draining those resources um, to the point that we really have right now sour crude barrels and sweet crude barrels are equal, which has never, ever happened. I mean, mostly we've always kept more sour barrels than sweet barrels. So what would be your near term outlook on crude then? I mean, it, you, do you feel that prices still have some room to come down? I think, yeah, I mean, I'm, I would not be surprised if we saw um, prices come down a little bit more. I think we will probably see what I would be watching for is in October, the SPR release is done. Right. And so I think we could be heading into where normally we generally see crude weaker in the winter, just because of demand reasons. I think we could be because nothing's really changed in the physical market. The physical market is still very tight. And so what I think that we could see is as soon as those barrels start to come off the market, we could be headed into a higher winter, which is outside of the norm. So, you know, I would kind of be looking, you know, I would kind of lay off crude for a couple months, <laughs> to All be right. honest, um, you know, um, and then kind of see, you know, what starts happening as we near the end of that release. That sounds, that sounds like a, a really good plan. So um, before, before we get it, I, I want to talk to you a little bit more about, uh, about something specific, but I want to say folks, if you like what you see here from Tracy, make sure you give her a thumbs up. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of this exclusive content, but Tracy, you got something else going on, not just with intelligence quarterly. So tell us what's up. Yes, guys. So I have a new project. That's called Markets Insider Pro, and that's marketsinsiderpro.com. And that is with Stephen Van Meter and uh, Jeff Schneider. Wow. And what it is, it's more of a product geared to new and newer traders. The price point is obviously much lower. And we cover um, the euro dollar, because Jeff is famous for Euro, his euro dollar university, um, bonds, equities, and then I cover commodities. So right now, you can go sign up at marketsinsiderpro.com. It's free for the next few weeks um, until um, we start the sub service. But we've already been posting things for the last few weeks. So there's plenty of free stuff to go check out. Um, so I encourage you to go sign up and do that.
All right, Tracy. Well, that sounds exciting. I'm a big, big fan of both of those gentlemen. And uh, so I'm excited to see how that works out for you guys. Uh, I want to thank you for spending your time with the Traders Summit community. And uh, we, should, uh, we should reconvene and meet again here in the next few weeks. What do you say? Definitely. All right, Tracy. Well, good to see you. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Hey, traders. Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell notification so you do not miss any of our market related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.